Hey everybody, Bobby Chu here. I'm an artist that has worked for directors such as Tim Burton, has created his own TV show that won an Emmy and was nominated for another Emmy in season two called Nico and the Sword of Light. And I enjoy painting paintings that put a smile on people's faces. But I also remember in the beginning of my career, I would look at amazing art that really moved me. And it was almost like this giant mystery. How can somebody do something like that? How can somebody paint something that attracts you so much and just leaves you in awe? More than anything, I wanted to do that. I want to capture people's imaginations, bring them into my world and show them the amazing creatures, plants and general life that I would just think about in my head. The only thing was when I tried to put it down on a piece of paper and show people visually, let me ask you if this has ever happened to you. I would look at a blank screen and I would have this wonderful idea. I see the image there. I see the amazing creatures and so on and so forth there. I draw one line down. I draw another line down. And then all of a sudden that image that I had initially has disappeared. Maybe 40% of it has faded away. And now it gets so much harder. And then I paint some more and paint some more. And by the time I'm just halfway through, I'm struggling. I'm confused, frustrated. I know the painting isn't going to go well. And so maybe I try another one. Maybe I turn down the opacity of this one a lot and I try it all over again. But nothing happened. Nothing changed to the point where I was looking at the art and going, wow, this is amazing. It's giving me the same kind of feelings as all those paintings that I really love that inspired me to try to do this piece. I realized that the portion of my drawing and painting that went the best was right in the beginning when I didn't need to get into details, when I didn't need to get specific. Once I had to put in specificity, where does this bone end? Where does this connect to this? How does the lighting work on this kind of a surface? When I started to think a lot more in depth about these things, I realized I didn't know. I was constantly guessing and that constant guessing resulted in a muddled message. I thought to myself, I need to learn how the world works, every fundamental out there before I could start to do some amazing art that people will love. Now, this is where you might think the story is headed, but it's not because then I started to remember all of the beautiful paintings, all the beautiful movies that didn't connect with me. One off the top of my head is Avatar Airbender, the live action movie. I remember watching the trailer at first and I loved the trailer. The trailer looked so cool with all the special effects and everything. And then I went to watch the movie and only to realize that I love the cartoon version so much more. And I actually didn't really care for the live action movie too much. But then I started to think to myself, why is that? It looked beautiful. Just like some other movies that might come to mind, put them in the comments. If you have any movies that you feel looked amazing, but still didn't connect with you. That made me wonder, why was I trying to learn all these fundamentals in the first place? If that's not the key to having people really connect with your art and really enjoy it. I was talking with a friend and this friend was telling me about this YouTube channel called the annoying orange. I went to this channel and I was like, what are you showing me? What are you trying to recommend to me? You know, when I turn it on, it doesn't look so hot yet. Many of these videos have millions of views. What the heck just happened here? I thought it was all about learning good fundamentals. Why do these videos that generally don't have exceptionally good fundamentals in art, how are they connecting with people so well? How are they becoming so popular? And then I start to realize it's how this image makes me feel fundamentals will take you so far. And in some cases, they are absolutely necessary for the viewer to feel that certain thing that you want them to feel like an awe inspiring feeling. Like when you see a beautiful sunset and you're just in awe of its beauty, or you see an epic, beautiful, whatever scene that somebody has painted and it's just so epic and amazing. You're just like, wow, how did they do that? Craig Mullins, sci-fi painting start to finish comes to mind where you're seeing this giant spaceship getting 
pulled apart and dismantled by literally a whole entire village of tens of thousands of people. What leaves us awe-inspired? It's the idea. But if the idea is not conveyed well, and you do not feel the way that the artist wants you to feel, then that to me is a piece of art that missed the mark. And to make great art, it needs to connect with your viewer. And to connect with your viewer, I concentrate on how the image makes me feel. Unfocus the eyes a little bit. Stop looking at every little tiny detail and just look at the image. How does this image make you feel? If it makes you smile and you want the viewer to smile, boom, you hit it on the head. If you want the person to feel sad and you feel like you want to smile, you got to rework the image. And if you want somebody to feel awe-inspired and they're looking at it feeling like they almost want to laugh, most likely that is not working well. And sometimes you don't actually have to paint something with those solid fundamentals to truly convey that feeling and to give your viewers that emotional impact. For example, The Annoying Orange or South Park. I love South Park. It makes me laugh out loud. Rick and Morty. It's drawn well, but it does have that looseness in it. It does simplify a lot to the point where I'm not watching it for its amazing, beautiful style, but I'm watching it much more because of how it makes me feel. Once I start to really concentrate on how the thing made me feel, I also realize I really need to beef up my fundamentals, not to make great art, but to help to support the idea that I have, because the idea is what's actually even more important than your fundamentals. It's just that most of the time, you need fundamentals to be able to convey your ideas properly. Fundamentals become a necessity. They become a requirement. But to get to those higher levels, we don't just need to have fundamentals. We need to concentrate on how our ideas make people feel because that is the path to create real emotional impact with your viewers. Once I realized this, this became my main focus. It wasn't if I'm drawing this correctly, if I'm doing the lighting correctly, if I'm doing all the little hairs that I wanted to do on this furry little thing. Those thoughts still came, but the primary goal that all the thoughts are there to support is to create an emotional impact for my viewers. And once I switched my thinking around, wow, all of my art started to take off. And the best thing of all is that this is something everybody can do. I've been teaching art for over 15 years now, and you wouldn't believe how quickly somebody can improve their art with the proper guidance. And in fact, we can all paint and draw far better than we think we can. It's just that most of the time we're concentrating on the wrong things and at the wrong time in the wrong order. Once I made my primary focus, how did this thing make me feel the emotional impact of it then everything else was history not only was my art gaining more traction but it also helped my career gain more traction because as a concept artist you should have your fundamentals already locked in but that's not why they're hiring you they're hiring you for your ideas now i don't want to downplay fundamentals like i was mentioning you need to know how to paint generally that's a prerequisite so if you are interested like i said i do teach on schoolism.com digital painting how i do things how i think but also if you're subscribed to schoolism you actually get access to the entire library over 50 courses taught by over 25 of the top artists in the entertainment industry so it's kind of like Netflix for artists. All right, everybody, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and visit schoolism.com and I'll check you all later.